When was the last time you read a book that you had genuinely not once seen on TikTok? Now, I don't know about you, but even for me, I don't remember the last time. It was before BookTok existed. My current TBR, my list of things that I've read recently, every single one, TikTok. And the exceptions were ones that I bought five plus years ago. Now, before I get into the rest of the video and start ranting and start telling you why I hate BookTok so much and start telling you why it's so awful, I want to do a quick disclaimer. I am so guilty of everything I'm about to say, whether it comes to consuming content or even making content. I am guilty of all the little things I'm about to pick out. So no, I'm not going to sit here and say why I'm better than everyone and why my content is better. I've fallen into the trap too. So here's the thing. You open up TikTok, you're on BookTok chronically. If you're scrolling, what do you see? You see YA, you see fantasy, you see romance. I mean, yes, it varies a little depending on like the specific niche that you are on. I guess. For me, I do not see a lot of like specifically YA romance anymore because I just don't read it. But even within the specific niches within the niche of book talk, it's all the same. And this is the overarching problem that I have with it. When I started out my TikTok account and the first thing I was doing was posting book talks. Yes, since then I've gone through my little author phase, my little creative phase. I'm kind of now in my like fashion era. <laughs> But when I first started out and what I wanted to do was book talk because, you know, a lot of it was very simple content. It was very much like, oh, here are these recommendations for if you want X, Y, Z. I thought, yeah, I'm going to make some of these videos with the books I had because even then I had an extensive book collection. And I remember some of the very first videos I made, it was books that I'd read that I'd never seen online before because I'd never got my recommendations from online. Books that I'd read, genuinely enjoyed and then went to recommend. I know when you're starting out on TikTok, yeah, maybe the algorithm hated me. Maybe I used the wrong hashtags. Maybe I posted at the wrong time of day. Nobody really knows how TikTok works. Either way, they were getting no traction, no views. No one was commenting saying, oh, I love these books too. And you know, at that age, I was not exposed to a lot of content online, whether that be TikTok, Instagram, etc. I didn't really have social media. And I just remember thinking, why does no one like these books. And I mean, simply, it's not the truth. People enjoy those books. It wasn't reaching the right audience because in order to get views and get traction on TikTok, you need to be recommending things that people enjoy. And to be recommending things that people enjoy, you have to be recommending things that are already on TikTok. And then to be recommending things that are already on TikTok, you have to be recommending things that people enjoy. Do you see the loop that we're stuck in here? We're very much stuck in the same cycle. And again, I'm going to take you back to when I first started making content, but this time on Instagram. And I remember one of the first posts I made, I was talking about why don't we go into bookstores anymore? Why don't we go in, pick up a book, buy it, move on? Why do we have to wait? to see the reviews on Goodreads. Why do we have to wait to see it recommended on TikTok at least 10 times before we can pick it up? And yes, I can understand like the Goodreads thing. You know, you want to see if you're reading a good book, you want to, you know, make sure that your money is spent worthwhile. But it just really bothered me. So I made a post about it. That post is no longer up, don't go looking for it. And you know what? I stand by that right now. And I think one of the major things that influenced this was COVID and you probably see me mentioning this a lot in videos and content. I have a lot of issues with what COVID did for us as a society. Now, I know that that sounds really deep, but when you think about it, there is a lot. I'm not going to go off on a tangent. I'm going to stick to my little rant here about book talk. But, you know, when COVID hit and we were all stuck inside, no one was going out, no one was going to bookstores in particular, obviously amongst other things, which means no one was going in spontaneously looking at, I don't know, let's say they're in their crime fiction era. Um, no one's going to the crime fiction section, looking, finding a book they like the look of, you know, maybe reading the blurb thinking, oh, this sounds good, picking it up, buying it, going. No one was doing that anymore. Instead, what we had was online shopping and book talk. Now, obviously some of you could argue, but you can do the same 
you know, online shopping, you can go on Waterstones, you can go on Amazon even, and you can search through books and you can virtually look at a bookshelf that way. But I just think it's not quite the same. I think when, I personally feel like when COVID hit, we stopped doing that and that trend continued on afterwards. So, you know, in summary, we turned to our phones during COVID, but when that was over, we stayed on our phones, we stayed on BookTok, and that is how we get all of our recommendations. Now, once again, I'm gonna bring you back to my disclaimer. I'm so guilty of this. Yes, I also read books that I've seen recommended a lot on TikTok. And I'm gonna use an example of the most recent book I read, which was Normal People by Sally Rooney. <laughs> Pre-COVID, pre-book talk, I would never have gone into a bookstore, looked at that book, read the first couple pages and still bought it. And yet here I am with my own copy. As much as I can see how people might like Sally Rooney's books, I do think she's a great writer. I personally cannot stand the style of writing without quotation marks. It's giving pick me. It's giving, I'm not like other girls. Does anyone else feel that? Please let me know if you do, because I feel like I'm the only one attacking her books on Goodreads with my like three star ratings, which isn't even bad, but anyway. And I genuinely only bought this book because I saw it so much on TikTok. And on from that, I began to see it so much on Instagram as well. And I do feel like Instagram is kind of a continuation of the problem. It's not its own problem because I feel like everything that happens on Instagram, all the trends and whatnot are just following on from TikTok. So I'm kind of bunching that in, Instagram books with book talk, kind of bunching them in together. And talking of buying books, that's another thing I want to address. I do feel like there is some sort of stigma, not stigma. I feel like there's some sort of pressure to be buying books and having physical copies. I see a fair bit of ebook readers, which I do like to see. The thing about book talk is you never see, oh, I went to the library today and this is a haul of books that I borrowed. No, you see everyone with their own copies. And even if they borrowed it from the library, no one's going to be saying in their description or in the comments or even on the post, they're not going to be saying, oh, I got this from the library. It's sort of romanticized to be spending so much money on books. And then, you know, you'll be seeing these hauls like, oh, what I got for Christmas, what I got for my birthday, it's a load of books. I'm like not everyone can afford to be spending that much on something that's not a necessity because let's be real it's not a necessity as much as you guys in the comments might be telling me it is <laughs> i am so privileged in that i can afford to be you know spending some of my money on physical copies of books and that's how i end up with these long tbrs <laughs> but you know there's not that many benefits as much as it is lovely just to be having a physical copy you know i see that because I agree. But you know, not only can not everyone afford to do that, but it's not good for the environment. Maybe you'll see your favorite book talk influencers. Can't even think of any off the top of my head, which is so embarrassing because I can picture them right now, but I can't, I couldn't tell you their names. Anyway, they'll be building like their own home libraries and stuff, which yeah, I know it's the dream for everyone. But it just, as a viewer, it makes me feel like oh, why don't I have that many books? Why don't I have the space for that? Why can't I afford to buy that many? Maybe I should go out right now and get some more, or maybe I should go on Amazon right now and order a new copy. And I'm not, you know, I'm not sitting here ranting at influencers to stop telling them to stop living their dream life. I'm just sitting here and saying, I can see how it can feel very pressurizing. And it's the same with, for example, clothes. You see it online, you want it. You see it online a lot, you want it even more. So in that sense, I can see how the pressure kind of builds up on you as a content consumer. So one more thing I wanted to talk about, which I meant to touch on earlier and then kind of got distracted, which also leads on from my main point of everything on BookTok is the same, is how bad it can be for authors, because this is how I see it. BookTok supports already supported authors and marginalizes already marginalized authors. Now, let me explain a little bit. As 
an indie author myself, BookTok is not a place for me. Advertising your book on BookTok is so impossibly hard if you don't already have a platform. Authors who have not been heard of before, who are new to BookTok, who are new to social media, who are, you know, releasing their debut, stuff like that, it is so hard for them to get seen because the authors that are being supported have either been around for ages or they're really popular and I'm thinking Holly Black and Lee Bardugo and Sally Rooney. The list goes on. And obviously this is no hate to them. I wanna, you know, I wanna add that in here. I'm not hating on content creators, authors, etc. I'm just saying <laughs> that, you know, good for them. BookTok has made them famous, successful, getting them paychecks in. But for everyone else, not so much. So you might think as a book talk consumer, oh, but we're, you know, we're helping out authors. You're helping out a very small, small majority of authors. And you know what? I want to end off this video on a different note. If you've sat here and watched this, either you agree with me on everything I'm ranting about, or you completely disagree with me and you're waiting till the end so you can argue against all my points in the comments. And you know what? This is for you guys. <laughs> I'm sitting here in a very privileged position. You know, I might be sitting here saying how much I hate it, but it's really not all that bad. And I want to talk about something that I have seen, which is that other people, not quite like me, but other people who don't like book talk complaining about it, but they're complaining for completely different reasons. These are men, I know that's a generalization, but men complaining about teenage girls reading and i could make a whole other video you know what i probably will make a whole other video on let teenage girls have hobbies but like in particular reading why are we why why is it such a bad thing to be reading you know if yeah okay it's tiktok that's got people reading but are they not still reading yeah okay people are reading romance books they might be reading smut i don't know either way are they not reading are they not you know at what point did that become a bad hobby to have at what point did we decide to start hating on teenage girls for having hobbies and yes i know it's not just teenage girls who are on book dogs not just teenage girls who read i'm just saying as a generalization you know i'm not sitting here and saying why are you reading why are you doing that that's a really bad hobby that's not good for you it just reminds me of that audio, that TikTok audio where it's like, I don't know where it comes from guys, don't hate me. It's like, when you sit back and look at the severity of the situation, <laughs> it's like, is it really that deep? It's not that deep. So yeah, I might be saying why I don't like TikTok, but it's all for personal reasons. Please argue with me in the comments. And you know what? I will genuinely be happy to hear what you guys have to say. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was a bit of a rant, but I do quite enjoy these sit down and chat style videos if there was anything i touched on that you want me to explain or or even make another video on please tell me but for now yeah i will see you guys in my next video